Hey, welcome today, sisters. Do we have any sisters in the house? All of our Life Church locations. My goodness, I just want to tell you, as your pastor, I could not be more excited to have sisters gathered at 30 different locations, coming to worship our Savior, to hear His Word. I'm even more excited that many of you are going to get involved in life groups on the other side, studying God's Word and being blessed. I don't want to say too much because we've got something better coming right after me, and it's my honor today to introduce to you my best friend, my bride, the mother of my six kids and one grandchild. I always brag on Amy for who she is in Christ, for her passion, but I just wanna tell all of you about a different side of Amy that blesses me so much. She is an incredible spiritual leader. In fact, what's happening right now at all the different locations is the fruit that was born out of her passion when she came to me and said, can we please do something to gather and strengthen the ladies, to reach one, to teach one? And this was born out of her heart. She has gathered amazing leaders at all of our different locations. Uh, Amy had a vision to start a ministry home. She started a ministry home. It's expanded into three different homes. She is a passionate, godly, amazing leader. And I wanted just to brag on her leadership. Not only that, is she is my best friend, could you please show a little bit of love today to my bride, Pastor Amy Groeschel. Sisters, we are a movement of God's people, a mosaic crafted from every tribe and every nation. We are a kaleidoscope reflecting His multifaceted light in spite of our brokenness. We are a sisterhood, a safe haven for the hopeless. From our faith springs our eternal hope. And this hope will spread through generations. Together, we stop at nothing to see that no one misses eternal life. We will reach one, teach one, with the greatest story we have ever known. We are a movement and we are leading women to become fully devoted followers of Christ. Thank you so much. I am eager on the edge of my seats. I pray you're on the edge of your seat as well. Welcome to Sisters. Girlfriends, it's our time. It's our gathering. And I pray that it is a launching pad. These events are meant to be launching pads to connect you in deeper community with one another. And so... I love that not only do we have these events, but we are kicking them off with a launching message that goes into a new study for you called The Call. And this study, guys, is it's four weeks, and I'd love for you to to join a group, to start a group. But, you know, if you want to go five weeks or six weeks or forever weeks, I just want you to be in these groups and share the Word of God together, get to know one another, and pray for each other, and be the body of Christ for each other. So, we're launching a message today for the call that's titled, A Calling to Follow. How many of you could raise your hands and agree with me that God has a calling on your life? Do you believe that? That you have a calling from God. I'm so glad so many hands went up. I'm glad you recognize this because in Christ, we need to understand that we weren't just saved so that we can just go our way and live however we want. Now, I I say that and we agree and that seems obvious, but I I kind of see some of that happening. I kind of see it sometimes in me. But we are all called as believers into something that starts at salvation. We're all called to salvation. We receive salvation. And that's, that is the first calling. But it's only the beginning. It's only the beginning. And callings of God are not just vocational for the missionary, for the pastor, for the worship leader, for somebody who feels led to lead a Bible study. No, callings of God are for every believer in Christ. 
And so if you know Christ, it's not about you. You have a new calling to follow, a calling that if I could just tell you as simply as I can what this big mission is that, that we're called to in the, in the tightest way I can, it's to know God and make him known. Amen. Yes. Another way that we can say it is to love God. To know him is to love God. Know him, love him. It's to love God. It's to love people, to know him, to make him known. This is the grand mission of a Christian's life, to know him and make him known, to love the Lord with all of our hearts and love our neighbor as ourself, love God, love people. Ephesians 2.10 says a little bit about our calling, doesn't it? It says, if you know it, that we are God's workmanship. We're his masterpiece and that we were created in Christ. We became new in Christ as a believer and saved in him, new creations, the old is gone, to do what? To do good works that God's prepared in advance for us to walk in. I hear calling in that. I hear that there's something for me to do besides just get a ticket to heaven, (laughs) right? I hear kingdom partnership in this because it's me and it's my father and he's I'm new in him, and he's saying, daughter, I have something for you to do. I have things for you to walk in. And so there's a kingdom partnership. It's beyond my human understanding that I can say to you that we are co-laborers with Christ, with the God of all that created everything, to labor with him, to partner with him. There isn't a higher calling. There isn't a greater privilege. And Quite honestly, this is an intimidating subject to talk about because of the gravity of that, that itself. In fact, Paul understood this with our key verse for the call study. He understood exactly because in Ephesians 4, 1, he said, we need to live worthy of the calling we have received. Live worthy, live worthy, worthy I mean, how many of us could raise our hands and say that we feel worthy? This is intimidating. Live worthy of the calling I have received. That is our key verse. And I'm sorry and not sorry that it's weighty. (laughs) It's the word of God. It's weighty to live worthy of the calling we've received. Jesus explained it this way. In Matthew 16, 24, this is how he explained calling. Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. It's weighty. Deny myself, take up my cross, and follow me. So I'm preparing the message, and I start looking up these words, deny This is a word that means I'm going to forget myself, disown myself. It's utterly just forget you, forget me. I I don't want you to see me up here. I this life in Christ should not be life in me. It's life in him. Denying ourselves. And then he says, take up your cross. That word, those words always kind of mess with messes with me. But when I think about if he wants me to literally What was Jesus doing when he carried the cross, when he took up his cross? We know what he was doing. He was headed to the crucifixion, but ultimately what he was doing was complete surrender to the will of God. Complete surrender to the will of God. That's how we're called to live. We're to to live worthy of that, to take up a cross of complete surrender. Lord, not my will, but your will be done in my life, not just for Jesus, but for my life, for your life. This is weighty. 
And he said, follow me. That word follow means accompany me, join me. This is my mission. I'm giving it to you. I'm setting you forth to go into all the world. He says, join me. I want you to know me, walk with me, live in me, be with me, join this mission, be all in. That's what we're supposed to do when we follow Jesus. I hope that you know someone like this. I I hope that someone comes to mind. I hope it's you. (laughs) You know, sometimes, sometimes I see me in that. I mean, who does this? If I look at the Bible, I mean, we know Jesus did it because he's Jesus. But if I look at the Bible, the man that inspires me the most is the Apostle Paul. If you don't know the Apostle Paul and you're new to the scriptures, this man He was so radically changed by God. Meeting Jesus while he was trying to kill Christians. And he was so transformed by his love and his grace and his mercy that he went all in. Talk about taking your cross up. I mean, as soon as he got the call to preach on his life, Jews were plotting to kill him. And it just got worse from there. Every bad thing imaginable that you could imagine, it seems. The beatings and the without uh, comforts of this world. The sacrifices. I mean, we just probably have no idea. He probably shared the light version with us of what he went through. But he was all in. It wasn't about, his life was no longer about him. It wasn't about easy. It wasn't about comfort. It was a mission to fully follow Jesus, to live as Christ, saying to die is gain. That was Paul. And like Paul, if you want to fulfill God's calling, because I know some of us, we get, um, we worry, we think, I'm not sure. What if I miss God's calling? What if I don't? find God's calling, my purpose for my life. We worry about that. But if you want to fulfill the callings of God on your life, the best advice I have is that you just follow him. You do what Paul did. We just follow him. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow him. When you follow, fully follow Jesus. You will find callings, specific callings for your life. So I want to be a little reflective with you, and I want us just to be honest. I did this myself. What direction are you going right now? Who are you truly following right now? Because I know that I'm honestly not always full straight on north. We follow who we are devoted to. Okay? Are you following yourself or the Savior? Spirit-led or self-led? You know, if I'm following myself and I admit, like, I do. I, I have a will that I try to die to, a flesh and a sin nature that I try to ignore and and put to death. But at times, I want to follow me. But you know what happens when you follow you? Okay? (laughs) My mom said it. I mean, we have the same thoughts. You're you're going in a circle like a silly dog chasing your tail. It's empty. I, I get nowhere. There's no fruit. There's no... It's just about me, and it's so small and so meaningless. If I follow me, if I'm just like, oh, I want this pleasure, and I want that pleasure, and I want to go after people paying attention to me and liking me and helping me and doing things for me, and, you know, I just, I want that, and I want... (laughs) It's exhausting, and you get nowhere, but we do this. And I think we're not going to head toward Jesus until we recognize it, until we repent of it, until we go, yuck, that grosses me out. (laughs) And and we begin to see, and we're honest, that we are following maybe ourselves. All roads should not lead to you. So we become like the who we follow as well. 
We follow who we're devoted to and we become like who we follow. So are we becoming more like the world or are we becoming more like Jesus, the creator of the world? I mean, just, I know these are weighty questions, but our Savior is worth us living worthy of his calling. I mean, do you, when you think about it, he went all in. I mean, Paul went all in. Jesus went all in for us. He fully gave everything for us. That's what we want to do. We want to give the same thing back and be all in, following him all the way. He's not asking us to do anything that he already didn't do. You know, he's not asking us to do what he didn't already do for us, but if I didn't say it clear. But I also want us to think about this little thought. If what I shared didn't already kind of step on your toe, but um, who is following you? Everybody has someone following you. You've got your children, you've got friends, somebody looking to you as an example. Where are you leading them? What direction are they headed because they're looking at you? They're looking at what you post, they're looking at what you say, they're, they're looking. Where are they going? Are they going to their themselves? <laughs> Hello, she's getting all cute, and I better do that too. Are they, <laughs> are they going towards something that's temporary, some temporary purpose, a worldly lust, or are they going towards truth? Are, they, are you pointing them to Jesus? Now, I want to say that we, I know we all want to be able to say if we really are Christians who love the Lord. Follow me as I follow Christ. But you know what? I have to I have to be honest. I have to admit that this message was so challenging to prepare. I have for one like last year when I taught on hope, it was like how can I teach on hope? when I am struggling so much to have hope right now. And this year I was like, Father, how can I teach on calling, the calling to follow you fully when I don't have this all together? I mean, I'm not sitting up here because I have, you know, just perfected this. (laughs) Far from it. But it is my deepest desire to get this right. It is everything that I get this right. And another problem I had in preparing this message is that how how do I outline what we're talking about here? How can you put this type of calling down in a 30-minute talk? How can I outline this? I mean, I struggled. I got, I, this kind of just all came together last minute because, and I, I mean, I just sort of, I had to lay it all down. I had to completely say, Jesus, help, because he wants me to, to really apply what I'm going to teach tonight, depending on him. And there's just, there's just no way to adequately describe how much this message is so much bigger. The calling he has for much is so much bigger than anything I could share with you. It's so much bigger than a study I could write for us. It's just so big. So, but I think the question, we know, well, we can't, we're not perfect. We're not going to get this completely right. But the question that we can ask, the one that really should matter, is how can we stay on track? How can we stay on mission to follow to follow Christ? Okay? Because we We are going to make mistakes and get our eye off of Jesus. But how do we get back and stay 
till the end, till our last breath, following Christ. I want to give you two steps to following Christ that are, to me, vastly important. They are like the foundation of our Christ walk. And these two ideas, keys, thoughts, they came when I simply asked myself, if we sat down together, you and I at tea or coffee, and you wanted to know, Amy, would you kind of mentor me with this idea of, you know, how am I supposed to follow Jesus? What would that look like? I want to, I want to follow him and do it well. Here's what I would tell you. Here's what I have learned. Here's, here it is. The first thing is stay close through prayer. Stay close through prayer. Amen, the end. (laughs) Stay close through prayer. What gets you girls out of bed? What gets you out of bed in the morning? Coffee. Some of you, it's your kids dragging you up. It's your dog. It's the alarm that just has to get you out. It's your bladder that gets you out of bed. <laughs> yeah, that was me. But, but I know we have to physically get out of bed, but what motivates you to begin your day? What's on your heart? What is going on in your mind at the start of the day? I want to encourage you to develop, if you haven't already, a practice of, as soon as you open your eyes, prayer, prayer to the Father. Begin, don't make prayer at the beginning of your morning your list of requests. I'm talking about, good morning, Father, I love you. I'm so thankful for this new day. Just a relationship prayer. Just a, I want to know you. Thank you for being so good to me. In your heart, just set your mind on him and on prayer. First thing when you wake up. That, if you aren't there, just sometimes these things take a practice and a setting, an intentional uh, time. And you might forget, and so you've got phone set and a reminder to remind you, ding, Pray. Pray first. Pray to know him, to love him. I pray, Lord, I pray I would love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I pray that my priorities be right for the day and that, um, you know, I just accomplish his will for that day and everything that he has. So like Craig, I wrote a morning declaration as in his following his example with his morning declaration. And I pray this a lot. I printed it off. I don't pray it every morning, mainly because I want us to keep prayer fresh. I need it fresh. I can't do a religious activity. I can't do a duty. I don't want us to do something that makes us feel spiritual and religious We are in a relationship and staying close through prayer, ladies, is is how you follow Jesus. It is how you receive the callings he has on your life. There isn't another road to that. It is knowing him that he directs you and you know him through just prayer and prayer that's simple, prayer that's sloppy, prayer that's ADD, just pray. (laughs) You be you and connect your heart to Jesus. That's all he's wanting. That's all he's wanting is your heart. He saved you because he wants to know you. He wants to be in relationship with you. You're you're not a, a daughter that's a distant relative. He's not the distant relative. This isn't somebody that's a friend that you just call on when you're like, hey, I need I need you. You and Jesus should just, you should desire in work to just get this close knit, knitness. And so the prayer uh, that I sometimes pray as a morning declaration is, this is the day that you have made, Father. I will rejoice and be glad in it. 
And I no longer live, Jesus. You are my life. Where you lead, I will follow. My eyes are fixed on you and the eternal. I have the mind of Christ and I depend on the Holy Spirit continually. I will walk by faith and not by sight. I will love, respect, and serve my husband Craig with true gratitude. I will love and guide my children in the truth. The law of kindness is on my tongue. I will give thanks in every circumstance. I will pray about all things. Your word is my guide, and I meditate on it every day. And these things, thank you. The prayers that we pray in the beginning of the morning, set the tone. They align us. And then you want to pray continually. The Bible says pray without ceasing. And we want to take that. We want to go with that. And so we're going to do it. And we don't have to make it anything but a clinging heart. Okay? Now, I want us to move on to point two. Because they're interwoven. They're, they're connected. Point two is that we stay close through dependence. The first thing is we stay close through prayer, this relationship of prayer. And the second is stay close through dependence. This is it. Prayer and dependence, girls. They're, they're like this. They're connected. We don't just pray and then this is separate. This is prayer and dependence on the Lord because Paul says in Galatians 5, 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desire. That's the denying myself. And since we live by the Spirit, we're going to keep in step with the Spirit. Keep in step. It means to have a rhythm, to go in sync. At the same time, like a military formation, it would be chaotic to not have a rhythmic step. And that's how the Lord wants us, like the dance team. Five, six, seven, eight, and we know when somebody's off. We don't want to be... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we don't want to be that person that's in another world listening to ourselves, depending on ourselves, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. It's five, six, seven, eight, following, depending on the spirit. <laughs> Craig and I go on walks all the time. Anytime it's a nice day and we have free time, we're out on a walk. And, you know, I want him to keep the pace, whatever pace he wants to take, and which is great. But um, sometimes I don't like his pace. Sometimes I want to get ahead of him and go a lot faster. I'm like, come on, let's run. And he's like, no. And sometimes <laughs> I'm the one that is dragging behind and it's because my mind's on something. I'm distracted. I'm looking around at flowers and birds and trash. And, and I just, I'm totally distracted. And so <laughs> he's like, that's true. And sometimes I'm just, I'm very tired. And I was like, I don't know how much further I can go. And I'm lagging behind. And sometimes I just stop. And I stop because I'm frustrated because he just said something that I just don't, don't like. <laughs> so I'm like... And then there are times when our walks, and most of the time, that they're effortless, they're rhythmic. And these are the times when it's, it's because I have laid everything down. I have laid down the distractions. I have my mind and my heart in engaged relationship. And this is just like walks with, with Christ, the dependence on Christ, keeping step. It's a dependence of the Spirit that we're walking in, that step-by-step, step, a relationship that we don't want to lag behind. We don't want to get ahead of God, but we just want to be centered where He is, trusting where He is engaged in a relationship that is dependent, dependent on Him. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. The Holy Spirit is living within us. In us. And we need to be aware of that. We need to acknowledge him and go, Lord, I know you're with me. You're, I need you. I need you right now. Thank you that you're with me. And you know what? As I'm acknowledging he's with me and aware that he's with me, I'm going to follow his whispers. When he, 
when I'm walking with him, I hear his whispers. If I'm lagging behind, if I'm getting ahead, it's not as easy. I'm too distracted. I don't hear the whispers. We've got to know his voice. You're going to have opportunities to need to really hear his whispers. He's got callings for you. Should I stay at this job? Should I go, to call, go back to college? What do I do? Do I go visit my friend? Do I stay home and do the laundry? I don't know. Do I serve at Life Kids? Do I do host team? Do I do youth? Do I buy a car? Should I wait? You have all these decisions in life, and you're going to need to depend on the Holy Spirit. If you want to follow Jesus, you're going to depend on the Holy Spirit for every little thing. And he is going to whisper to you. He's going to show you. He's going to direct you in different ways. But you're going to need to know his voice. And we're not going to know his voice unless we practice this dependence. If you practice the dependence, you're going to hear his voice. You're going to know it. For example, uh, this summer, we were out um, down in Fort Worth at a church. And I needed to run an errand. I don't know Fort Worth at all. They're highways or streets. I, this is not my territory. But I needed to run an errand. And so, of course, thankfully, we have maps on our phone. And it guided me to my destination when I set that in. And I depended on it wholeheartedly and got to my, pl- to my shopping destination. Hooray. <laughs> I did my errand and was ready to head back to the church. When I got in the car, I went ahead and set my car. I knew the way out of the store to, toward the highway, and I began to set my, my phone back to the church, and I had my phone plugged into the car, so I expected, like I had when I went, to see it up on the screen of my, that there was a screen on my car that could show me my direction. Some of these fancy cars do that, and so I wait, and nothing comes up, so I started pushing around on this touch screen of my car, and I found navigation, and I touched it, and something awful happened. As I got on the highway, my phone is giving me directions, and my car is giving me directions of how to get back home to Oklahoma City. (laughs) Two voices, that one in a British voice, one in a regular girl voice, (laughs) take this road, exit now. It, I was panicked. I, it was, I was so freaked out, but I just had to focus. I was like, I can do this. I'm not going to listen to that voice. No. She's telling me to get off now. I'm not doing it. I'm not detoured. I know which voice to listen to, and I'm going to focus on that voice. I'm going to hear that voice, and I'm going to follow that voice. That's the voice. That's the voice I need to follow. And I got back, safe and sound. But I had to take all the distractions away and focus on that voice, his voice. There's so many distracting voices. They're all over telling you, do this, go there, hey, be this. Listen to his voice. Lean in and know his voice. Whose voice are you tuned into? I know sometimes I'm not tuned into the voice of the Spirit, the voice of the Father. There's a great quote by Brother Lawrence. He says, If we knew the great need that we have of God's help, we would not lose sight of him even for a second. I want to recognize, and I hope you do too, how much I need the Father. We all need him so desperately more than we could ever imagine. So we need to stay close in prayer. We need to stay close in dependence on the Spirit, keeping in step and listening to His whispers. Tuned in, depending on Him. When we do this, when we're tuned in in prayer and depending, you're allowing Him to lead you. He's leading you to paths of righteousness. When you're following Jesus, where do you go? You go to peace. You go to places of freedom. You go to joy. You go to being hands of healing and hope. You get to be, you go to, he leads you to wisdom. He leads you to sometimes places that you never imagined yourself going, but you're so glad he took you there. 
And ultimately, the Father leads you to himself, to intimate friendship. If you are calling yourself a Christian and think you're following Jesus, but you're not finding yourself being led to intimacy and knowing Jesus, intimate friendship, I would suggest that you're following works, religion, not Jesus. When you follow Jesus, you find a person. You find a relationship. You find intimacy. Stay close through prayer. Stay deeply dependent on the Holy Spirit. We need him so much. Now, I can't tell you what God's specific calling is for your life. I can't. But I can tell you a few of the callings that the Holy Spirit has called me to as an example of how this works. The Holy Spirit, he has called me um, in a lot of ways, like you, little ways, day to day, do this, do that. But then there's some specific things, assignments he's given me to be about. One of them is homeschooling. Craig and I were called to this before we even had children. So it's pretty cool. But, you know, you would think, oh, that's so great. Good for you, and you're awesome. And (laughs) what? (laughs) I could never do that, and whatever. I am telling you that the things that the Lord calls you to, you're scared to death of. And I was terrified and insecure to step into the calling of homeschooling. But I knew that the Lord was leading me to it. And so for the last 24 years or so, that's what I've predominantly given my life to. Um, It's not been easy. There's been times when I wanted to give up. But the Lord doesn't call us to easy. Easy never changed the world. (laughs) Okay? Another thing is, he called me to disciple women. I wasn't looking for this calling. I do not like attention. I would rather just be behind the scenes helping clean up something But when he called me, he had to do it like a lightning bolt, getting my attention. And ladies, talk about scary. I felt so foolish, inadequate. I felt, in starting, so vulnerable, exposed. But you step into things when you follow Jesus. Because he is good and he leads you And you can trust them. Because callings are not about us. They're never about one person. But they are always about Jesus. Another thing I was called to do that I want to share is is just Branch 15. Branch 15 is a transitional um, housing ministry. um, Now in three homes in Oklahoma City area. And all I want to say about this. Because we all have different things we're called to is that it was so much work in the first year on me. I uh, it about killed me. <laughs> and why am I telling you that? Because I want you to understand that callings are not about self-glorification. Look what God's calling me to do. I'm going to Africa. <laughs> That's not what they're about. <laughs> they're hard work. They take you out of yourself. I've had to die and lay, myself, lay my life down again and again and again. Each day is, he's calling me to things that a lot of times I don't want to do. And some, I know you can relate that you are called to do things that you think I don't want to do because you think you can't. You can't. And I can't either. It's the Holy Spirit that enables us, empowers us, and will equip us to do everything that he calls you to do. And it's great to clap for that because it's so true. But it's truer than we ever could imagine. It's so true that callings are about what's on his heart, that he places on our heart and mind. Sometimes it's an impression. Sometimes we hear it in a whisper. We get confirmations and we just know I, can, I feel compelled to this. I can't get it off my mind. I feel so drawn to this. And we enter into following Jesus in a way that is 
denying ourselves, is relying, picking up our cross and relying on him, is following him. And I'm so thankful that God doesn't give up on us when we just blow it, when we feel the weakness and all the doubts. I'm so thankful for the body of Christ that he places around us to support us in those things that he asks us to do. And I'm so beyond thankful that we all as believers in Christ get to be a part of his team. I mean, what a big deal. So if you have ever wondered, worried, doubted, thought, what if I'm missing my calling? Let me tell you, when you follow Jesus by staying close through prayer and deeply depending on the Holy Spirit, we end up living our calling. We end up knowing him and making him known. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you everything everything. We just declare to you, Jesus, that we are not worthy, but we thank you that because Christ lives us in us through the Holy Spirit, that you equip us, that you call us, that you allow us to be your partners. You allow us to follow you as your children, and you, you hold us close to your heart in friendship and help us to know you and make you known. Father, with the heads bowed and eyes closed. I just, I ask this question for those here today that just say, I want to be all in like Paul. I want to, I'm going to go as deep as I can go, as high as I can go, as I can reach and just repenting of following myself or following the world and the culture. Lord, I want to be completely, fully a follower of Christ so that I can say, to someone else. Follow me as I follow Christ, living not my own anymore, but just ask Christ. If that is your prayer, seriously consider raising your hand and we'll pray, Lord, that this would be us. Just lift your hand if that is you. Let's pray in this. Heavenly Father, yes, Lord, we just We give you everything. We pray that you would take all of us, that we would no longer live. It would be Christ in us. Father, we pray just a prayer of repentance. We're sorry. Forgive us for following ourselves, for following ways of the world and not in times, not you. We want our eyes on you all the time. Father, we want our passion and our heart to be you, close to you in prayer at all times, nonstop dependence on you, keeping in step with you in all things. Because you gave us everything, Father, we give you everything. We take it all, take our lives. We're all in, Father. We hold nothing back. Jesus, everything I am, everything that these women have, we give you. Our lives are yours, Jesus. Our lives are yours in Jesus' name.